Hi everybody and welcome back to the second week of iridescent learning here at Vermont Elementary. Today we're going to be talking yet again about bird flight aerodynamics. What do these pictures have in common? Yeah, both the airplane and the birds, they both have wings. And what are these, what does it help it do? Well, someone already said it, fly, that's very right. So when we're looking at birds, uh, what we really are trying to do is look at their wings. There are many different types of birds that have many different types of wings. So there are two different quantities that we're going to look at today. One is called the span. That is, when the bird is stretched out wide like this, how wide is it? And the other is called the cord. That is, when the bird is stretched out like this, how far front to back, how, how long is that distance of the wing? So what we have here is an image of the wing. This is true for both bird wings and airplane wings. This shape is very special and it's called an airfoil. And this airfoil is specially curved on the top and flat on the bottom. And this helps the birds create lift, which is the force that keeps them up in the air. So what we're going to be talking about today is Newton's law. And that, Newton is a very famous scientist. Scientists are like engineers. They study nature and physics. So you guys might know him because he's usually the scientist that the apple falls on top of his head, and that's how he discovered gravity. For this law, it's that every force, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So what that means is every time you push or pull on something, they'll also push and pull on you. So when you jump in the air, you know when you jump in the air, you don't fall right through the ground, right? When you jump, what do you feel on the ground? You feel gravity. Yes, actually, gravity pulls you back down, and then the ground stops you, right? You feel that push on your foot, right? It's because you're pushing on the ground, so the ground pushes back on you. So here we have a little video. Somebody's sitting on a skateboard, and he's going to throw the basketballs. So as he's doing that, the basketballs are going forward, and it's pushing him backwards. Here we have the same guy. What he's got is a fire extinguisher, and so he's going to be pushing out gas in the forward direction, and that'll propel him backwards. <laughs> so far we've talked about this in terms of, of a forward and back or left and right motion, but the same works exactly the same way for down and up motion. We'll talk about that in just one minute. Um, so what we have here, this is a video of an airfoil or a special wing shape flying in air, and these green lines show the motion of the air. So what's happening is that the air is being pushed downwards, and as a result, the wings are being pushed upwards. This is what keeps it flying. Okay, so the air pushing down on the wing is what actually gives the wing its lift, and the lift is what carries the plane up and what allows birds to fly. The angle of attack is just the angle that the wing is situated, okay? So you can see how the fourth picture, it has a more angle. You can see that there's a 15 degree for it, whereas the first picture is just flat on the ground. So have any of you guys ridden in the car? I stuck your hand out and then felt the air pushing against your hand. And then, and then when you move your hand at different angles, don't you feel when your hand's like this, there's so much air pushing against it? Right? And then when you put your hand like this, it's like you're just cutting right through the air, right? So this angle is what gives the airplane its lift. When your hand is like this, that's when you're going to get the perfect amount of air so that it can carry your hand upwards. The air and then the wing. You can see the air and the smoke, right? Now as he tilts at a bigger angle of attack, you can see that the air is being changed. That's how the air works on your hand when it's out the car window too. When the wing is like that, well, a little lower than that, that's when the air is both on top and on the bottom. And the air on the bottom is what lifts up the wing and that helps airplanes and birds to fly. But what we don't want to have is have such a big angle of attack that the wing doesn't work anymore. So what we have here is three pictures. The first is when the wing is pretty much flat, there's only a little bit of lift. The middle picture is just right. That's a very good angle, which gives us lots of lift. With the very bottom picture, then the angle is too high and the wing doesn't work anymore because the, the air is just hitting against the wing and it's not uh, functioning properly anymore. Here you go. And you, I have this crumpled up piece, a uh, crumpled up ball. So since we're scientists and engineers here, Let's make a prediction. What's going to happen when we throw the piece of uh, when the when we throw the ball versus when we throw the airplane? Yeah. 
That's right. The prediction is that the ball is just going to fall, whereas the airplane has wings, so it'll be kept up. All right, so on the count of three, I want you to both throw them straight that way, okay? One, two, three. The ball fell in a perfect arc, whereas the airplane flew straight for a while. The wings kept it going just straight, whereas the ball fell immediately. So now it's time for the experiment, and we're going to be using construction paper, and you can decorate it, and um, we're going to tape it all together, and you're going to make your own airplane. So there are some pictures of birds, so you can kind of see we want wings, we want each side to be symmetrical, that meaning we want each side to look the same, and those are some examples. So what's going to happen is that what I'm going to I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to blow over the top of it. Let's see what happens, okay? You see how that works? When we blow underneath, that's the air pushing it up, but when we blow over the top, that's also pulling up the air. Right? So earlier we talked about how air underneath pushes the wing up. Right now we're going to talk about how air over the top pulls it up also. Ready? See that? And then maybe fold it like this. And then you could cut out the wings in any shape that you want and then just glue it, stick it on with tape. You can see the little boy in the picture over there. Kind of, that's how you kind of want to go. Thank you. Oh, wow. Look, you designed a very nice plane here. So you could like cut it out on your paper, maybe over here, and then design your own wing. You have like a small wing over here. So design it and then cut it out and then stick it to the airplane. This is just an example. You can use even this half to cut out a body and then maybe fold it like this to make it more stable or something like that or make it a tube. Don't make it too heavy. Right, so first we're just going to make the body of it, and then the wings. Oh, but look what the boy did in the picture. And then you can draw it as a grande. This is the hardest part. You have to get the body correct so that you can get the wings onto the body. So you can see how I'm folding it down. finishing up. Once you're ready, come up to the start here. Uh, let's form a line and we'll see how far we can get to the plot. Okay, let's see how far you get. Was it easy? Yes. You know, yours is going further than everyone's. It went 15 feet. Because I like them. My mom made them. Oh, your mom made them? Okay. Whoa. Okay. So, usually when that happens, 
right? So it, it kind of came up like this and did backflip, right? So usually what that means is that there's something pushing the front up or pushing the tail down. So why don't you try folding it the other way, seeing if you can keep the uh, keep the front down a little bit. Because what we don't want is have the front uh, the front flying up. So far it can go. Why she's falling? Why she's moving? Hmm. Every time I fall, it like goes back. Okay, so you have the same problem that he had just a minute ago. So what happens is, something's pushing up on your nose, or maybe something's pushing down on your tail. But what you're doing is you're essentially making it do a backflip. So if you push the tail down a little bit, then let's see what happens. So what did you do different to make it work better? I just take the, I just take the bottom wing a little bit. You see? It's hard to take for that idea. Is that good or bad? And that's why it flies good? How far did it go? Who could tell me something that we learned tonight? Sure, so air helps the wings stay up in the air. Sometimes at a good angle it will fly really smoothly. Right. Instead of falling down or like go. That's exactly right. That the how well your plane flies or how well your bird flies depends on what's called the angle of attack, the angle at which it flies. All right, so the planes and birds are yours to keep. Take them home. Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. I hope we had a great time.